How's everyone doing? Uh, I just wanted to do a quick video response to a MasterPass member. His name is Andres, and he wrote me about how to use the dynamic symmetry, cropping, brisson, and all that stuff, and presenting your photos to clients. So, on the bottom of 83, day 83, negative space and filling the grid in photography and painting, he uh, saw this quote that I quoted from um, Myron Barnstone, my mentor. My mentor, Myron Barnstone, would always say, the subject is the dog and the rectangle is the tail. The saying is, the dog that wags the tail, not the other way around. You have a clear idea of what your subject is and then you fit it into the uh, scene with the appropriate rectangle and you fill the grid. You get rid of all the excess negative space that doesn't help given enough space to be properly balanced. About cropping, you said, on the other hand, you mentioned that in photography, cropping is not that great because then you screw up angles and ratios. I guess the reason why Brisson didn't like it either. I can also relate to this statement, but then if strictly following the logic, you're limiting yourself to the subject that fit the aspect ratio. Well, I'll just show you this. There's an example on here. Uh, same with this picture. I'm not saying crop your images. I'm saying fill the grid and get it. Try and get it right the first time, so you don't have to waste all this, all these pixels and uh, quality loss. So here's a Brisson photo that I found, which is probably one of the only ones he has out there that he didn't. Um, really fill the grid and work with the diagonals and the reciprocals of his 1.5 rectangle. So what I did was I filled the grid. I used the, I think it's a one point, yeah, 1.5 grid. I line everything up so this arm's echoing the diagonal, the broke diagonal. His code is echoing this sinister diagonal. He's right in the middle and then he's got the baby on this polar point right here which also both of their heads are on that diagonal. So now that we look at it after the crop, it's more a compelling image and we know exactly what we're looking at. If you see a butterfly flying around in a field, you don't want to just take a picture of all the grass and the butterfly and all that and the flowers. Uh, if, you, if it's the butterfly that interests you, you want to try and get close to it get your macro lens out and zoom in and whatever else you got to do to get close to that. Now if you preconceptualize, if you have a certain idea sketched out and you know exactly what rectangle you want to use, say there's a scene in the forest and you know the tree's branch is echoing the armature of a root 2 rectangle, then you want to use your diagonal, which I have, let's see, I include downloads of all these rectangles and grid overlays and all that stuff so you can put it on your LCD. So when you get on the scene, you can use this diagonal gauge to try and find the diagonals that are already on the location. That way you can work with the appropriate rectangle. So this comes in handy, this diagonal gauge, and using the LCD overlays comes in handy too. So the reason why Brisson wouldn't crop his images, he worked with the 1.5 rectangle strictly. So all of his photos, you'll see that he's working with the reciprocals and the coincidences. And if we started cropping his images, he knew that that would mess up the dynamic symmetry of that rectangle. This one, he's waiting for the appropriate moment to snap the shutter to get this woman's arm on the Baroque diagonal. This one's got Giacometti's arm on the reciprocal and he's locked into this vertical right here. Although some of his famous pictures are cropped, but at least they still adhere to this basic armature and the grid. The golden rectangle is not a slice of cheese. Within that I show a line within a rectangle and then another line within the same rectangle. 
This is trying to show how people see your art, people see your photo on the wall, or they'll see your painting on the wall. And this kind of stuff, these little tiny adjustments right here, if they don't know anything about art or photography, they can still see visually and they know they can see balance and they can have a feeling of what works well. That's why people go into museums and they're mesmerized because these master painters know exactly how to communicate this visual message to them even though it's in a hidden way. This is kind of showing you how this certain tweaking of the diagonal can affect the dynamic symmetry of your rectangle. So this one is different from this one just by a little bit and this one is, should look more pleasing because it's the exact diagonal of this 1.5 rectangle and this one is a diagonal from the root 2 I think or the root 5. Here's another example with more diagonals in it. So if you look at this one maybe you get a feeling like hmm something's off but then this one you're like hmm that one's more pleasing. But it's a sensitivity and the more you learn these design techniques the more you're in tune with it. How do I go about this? Depending on the subject, you're constantly switching aspect ratio, then fit the subject into the appropriate grid. Doesn't this later create problems while editing, meaning a lot of different aspect ratios or delivering to the clients? You need to, as the photographer and the artist, you need to be in control of your art. So if you want to be like Brisson and run around with a camera and choose to just lock yourself into this 1.5 grid and armature, then that's perfectly fine. You just gotta look for these moments like he did that can enhance the geometry and the visual message. But if you're a fine art photographer, sometimes you can sketch something out, or if you're a painter, you can sketch things out. If that sketch ends up being a model at a certain diagonal or a lion, say you're painting a lion or something and you've got certain diagonals in your sketch then you want to try and fill the grid and you want to try and incorporate the best rectangle for what's available within your sketch and when you're delivering to your clients um, usually they have the final say of what is available or what they get but it's it's your job as an artist if they have a complaint of what you've done say you you crop something to a root two and they want a 24 by 36 print of it and they like the uh, 1.5 format for some reason. You might have to either educate them on how it works better with the crop you chose or settle and give them what they need. But I created this perfect canvas size for your design. So this will give you an idea of if you are cropping down any images or trying to line up your canvas to something specific. So the 8x10 is actually the size of a root 5 rectangle. Um, but yeah, if you can, try and stick with the rectangle that's complementing your subject in the background. That way the dynamic symmetry actually has a chance to work and create that visual dynamic that you don't usually get with the rule of thirds or putting your subject in one spot and having all this excess negative space on there. So I hope that answers your question, Andres. I thank you for joining the Master Pass and I really hope you are learning a lot. Congratulations on just putting yourself out there and giving these techniques a chance and trying to further your art um, by learning these composition techniques. So awesome job. And if you have any other questions and I didn't answer this one properly or anything like that, just email me back. I'm trying to do more video work, so if anybody has other questions, send them my way, I'll try. Otherwise, I will be moving to Hawaii the 5th of, or the 4th of March, I'll be in Hawaii with my girlfriend and her two little cockatoo birds. So look forward to more outdoors videos. I've been waiting a long time to do these techniques and present these techniques outdoors in the environment where I love to be and in the warm environment and I just can't wait to get there and share some of this stuff with you. So I hope that helps and I will talk to you guys later. Take care.